All right, everybody, this is Sheets. And for week 14, we once again have uh, Michael Brayhawk, Brave Jayhawk Jensen to discuss uh, uh, week 13 in Survivor Pool. And we're going to continue onward. And uh, just to kind of recap what where we've been, for those of you who are here the first time, we've been doing this since week one. And we're going to be going right through until we're both out or maybe even past that. We'll see. Um, again, to recap, uh, my last pool uh, actually ended. Uh, I won it back in week, uh, chopped it back in week eight. Uh, excuse me, back maybe week seven or eight, I don't remember. And then I lost the last pool I was in in week eight. And I think that there hasn't been a single person that got eliminated from a survivor pool contest of any pool since then. Um, so in any case, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, just to recap, Mike was, has been, we've been tracking his last pool for the last several weeks. And I imagine that no one got knocked out, but we'll, we'll, we'll take a look and then we'll start uh, in for this week. So Mike, how'd you do last week? Did anybody get knocked out? Um, I saw that, uh, there was one real, real nasty sweat pretty much throughout the survivor industry. Um, actually, the Cleveland game was pretty, pretty dicey for a little while too. But the Seattle one was the real, was the real stress, uh, the real stress queen. Why don't you tell us how your week went? Hopefully, you spent it in church, um, and uh, give us an update on your your last week. Uh, it's hard to be stressed when you don't watch. Um, I did watch the Chief, I did watch the Chiefs game. Um, m m minor stress. We were following it on. Uh, on, on GameCast, but um, I, I had some friends over um, for the Chiefs Bengals game. Uh, we went, we ended up going Seattle and Dallas. Uh, it was definitely the, I guess, the right pick between the two options. I really, I really wanted to go um, Cleveland Seattle. I, I, I in a vacuum, very bad. Um, but it's already looking like maybe the future upside could have outweighed the uh, you know the, the poor EV for the immediate week week fourteen. Um, the, the thought behind that was going double Dallas in fourteen by taking Cleveland instead, and then having Buffalo for week sixteen, fifteen, sixteen, or eighteen. Um, our breakdown was very odd. I, it went, uh, I top end, we were looking at possibly 12 Cleveland. Uh, we ended up having only seven. I, I thought that was strange. So, um, so, so my goal uh, is sometime before the end of this season is for Mike to understand what's going on here. So some people come in here, like really watching this for the first time. And they have no idea what you're talking about. So why don't you just re re remind everybody what pool you're in, how oh, many yeah, it started yeah. with, <laughs> how many there are left, and then we'll get back into it. Go ahead. I keep forgetting that part. Um, so we started at 1,100 down down to 16. We mm -hmm. haven't lost anyone for the last two weeks. More or less, it's a standard single pick pool. But if there's multiple people remaining at the end of week 18, uh, the pool goes into the playoffs. If you did not use a team – during the regular season, you can pick them twice. If you did use that team during the regular season, you can pick them once. And you had you had you had two entries, and mm -hmm. actually you're, you're you're down to two entries, and you have both remaining through last week. And what we're looking at here is kind of the grid of what you're projecting everybody for for the future. Correct. I, I put the more obvious ones in there. So um, my partner and I are the top two rows. Okay. We are definitely going Dallas and Buffalo. There's really no – actually, that's not true now that I just thought of it. Uh, we're either going to go Dallas, Buffalo, or Dallas, Las Vegas. Um, Jess is going to be mad at me when I even bring this up because it, it just makes it complicated because – Buffalo is probably just the slam dunk easy pick. Um, and then the picks below are the best case scenario pick for each entry. So it's not necessarily what I'm projecting. It's just uh, giving a visual to the best remaining teams each entry has. So, so these, so, so these, so these blanks are just ones you haven't figured out yet. The, so the, so the one that says Cincinnati, that means they do not have Las Vegas or better. 
No, what I mean is that what about the blank one between Buffalo and Cincinnati here? Meaning, yeah. So meaning that I was I was going to get to that. I mean, the blanks do not have any of the, oh. the teams listed in that column. Oh, I see. Um, so they do not have they they do not have Cincinnati. They do not have Las Vegas, and they obviously don't have Buffalo or Dallas. Uh, yeah. They you know, they'll have to drop to some, you know. Uh, almost every uh, Seattle is going to be a common pick for uh, for sure. I should have actually showed one more column. Five people took Seattle last week, including us. So there will be okay. uh, some Seattle picks this, this week. What are they like a four point favorite? Yeah, something like that. So so just to uh, and again, just this is the survivor grid. This is what has become like irrelevant. Um, it's been incredibly right. irrelevant for weeks one, two, three, through 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 nine and ten. A little less so 11 and 12, but now it's totally irrelevant because these all this will let me do for you guys is just show you who the biggest favorites are pretty much. Um, yeah. I mean, this EV is just based on just stuff that has nothing to do with your pool, uh, nothing to do with your whoever's watching pool. I mean, you're at this point, everybody's pool should be down to a, a reasonable point where you should know, at least with some degree of certainty, who everybody else is taking, who they have left. And so you should be able now I will say that if you want to go to truedfs.com and, and 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 do a customized EV calculation, you have that available for you up there. But even still, I mean, you're going to have to, you know, we're talking about pools with even more than like 30 people in, you know, whatever it is. And, and a lot of them are, a lot of them at this point are kind of like, kind of like, uh, are kind of like mics. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through your pool and then we're going to go back to the, the other office football pool, one that we were, that we were tracking yeah. before because of actually some kind of interesting results. So you're looking at, you have, I presume obviously you have Dallas and Buffalo available this week and you are, and the only, so the only people, there's only one other participant with Dallas available. So I'm presuming that all these guys that you slotted with Buffalo do not have Dallas, right? Uh, so, there, there are two people. Yeah, correct. No one has it. If they were to have multiple, if you're playing, if you have Dallas available, you're playing. That's basically the assumption here. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have these two guys that have Dallas. All right. And there's, there's, th I mean, there's three of, there's three of us total that have Dallas. Right. You know I'm saying aside from you, okay. two guys have Dallas. Okay. You got three guys that are jamming Buffalo, and then after that, you have Cincinnati and Vegas. Now to give everybody an idea of what this, what's going on here, you have Dallas is ninety percent. You have Buffalo at seventy eight percent. And then the aforementioned Vegas, you're dropping all the way down to 69% winning chances and Cincinnati, 69% winning chances. Um, but it's, but those are your next best. And then if you're going to drop from there, I guess the next one is Seattle, right? Do, do, do people have Seattle available in these blank spots or no? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at my master here. the the one The one that's green, that person does not have Seattle. Okay, so they're they're and like the other, they're the, like the they're like in a world. Entities. They're like in, in like another planet of, of picks here. Okay, correct. the The other three blanks have Seattle available. Now I have a question for you. I'm like I'm like gazing at this now. So Dallas, you have Dallas and Buffalo, and then. Looking at week fifteen, that's a fun one. We, so we, we back we backed into a very lucky situation, as you can see here. You backed into a lucky situation because Green Bay is now uh, going to be a ten point favorite over the Rams, where they before were barely playable, if at all. Correct. And, they're not, I mean, they're a nine point favorite right now, as you speak. So and, that, that was pretty fortunate. And and Minnesota. In fifteen, is a six. It's all they're, yeah. they're, they're six now. These people that I presume once five, again, five and a, five and a half. the people that you have playing Minnesota or the Jets do not have Green Bay available, or they would be taking them, right? Um, Correct. So again, I've for all of these columns, I have if if there's a, a team better than the team listed, it means they do not have them. Now, obviously, the guy that's got the best, the best, I the best entry well for at least another week is, is kansas city like if he could if he could somehow like he could knock out the whole pool if he felt like it not if he felt like it but like he, he needs to get green bay out as a nine-point underdog that's the problem um but to have the be the only one having to have kansas city is pretty strong but 
I, 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 I'm looking at this Tennessee thing in week 16, and you know what offends my senses, right? It's it, it just to see, like, all that Tennessee over there. Yeah. I, I just I just wonder if the guy with KC is not just supposed to hold them and play them in 16 and, and, F, and screw all the Tennessee people. Um, did you, would you, would you like, if you're, if you were this guy with the Kansas city in 15 and you made it through somehow, would you play KC and then, then chalk Tennessee? Like you play KC at 15, you're fighting against like, like a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're fighting against yeah. nine point green Bay, whatever. If you play Kansas city in 16 against what very well, this could be the breakdown. I mean, Tennessee really could be almost everybody. Okay. Like if you have this guy, you can save Tennessee till sixteen. Boy, oh boy! I mean, look, Tennessee's what they say probably going to win. But listen, this is this is this is the United States of America. There's all kinds of possibilities out there. You're going to get fifteen to one or something like that. Um, it, it it kind of uh, it's kind of interesting. Do you, now, do you have? I, I'm going to talk through this. With you. you have anything you can do in sixteen except for Tennessee or no? It's actually going to break down pretty well. And this is why when, when you're looking at future weeks, you, you have to use this tool and just start crossing out okay. teams that no, – I mean, no cross out Buffalo, Kansas City, Baltimore. Cross all those teams out. Oh, nobody, nobody saved Baltimore for 16? Or seventeen? Uh, yeah, ba- Baltimore is gone, and, and I, we're just gonna. I just want you to cross out Kansas City. We know that one person has it, but everyone else, assuming everyone takes Buffalo in yeah. fourteen, yeah. this is what it's gonna look like. And, and actually, this works out really well for me because if we just go double Green Bay in fifteen, the next best pick past Tennessee is Minnesota, and Minnesota is gonna be used very heavily in fifteen. So. Uh, Minnesota is going to open up for me in 16. Yeah. Because if you have two, if you have two entries, if you have two entries, I'm going to make you take Minnesota in one of them in 16. You, you can't be, you can't be part of this 14. Oh, a hundred, oh, a hundred percent. No, a hundred percent. But there's one, there's one other option. The the other option is taking Buffalo for, for me. The, The problem with that is we would have to, it's a very similar to our situation last week, but it's a little bit more obvious how many people are going to take Las Vegas. At least I think it is. And the loss, the person that has Kansas city remaining their their best case scenario pick is Las Vegas. So we want Las Vegas to lose, to eliminate that Kansas city person. I don't think that, that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't take Las Vegas because of that, but we're looking at, if we take Las Vegas to say Buffalo, there being, I would think, a minimum no. of an absolute floor of three, but it could easily be five. I would I would drop Buffalo on people now and 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 but I I would really consider when we get to 16. Um we'll we'll have hopefully we'll be able to have the discussion. At least if Dallas and Buffalo both lose, then <laughs> whatever it is. Oh, well, it's it's simple. If 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 it goes, if we go Buffalo Dallas and they both win, and yeah. we go double Green Bay, yeah, we are one hundred percent at yeah. current spreads taking one Minnesota in sixteen. Okay. I mean, it's okay. not even it's not even okay. a question. Okay. okay. Um, no, the question is. Well, these other people if, might also like these people that have the choice in Minnesota and the Jets. In in fourteen. I mean, in fifteen, they might do something similar. They might play Jets and save some Minnesota for for. No, that's very un, no, that is very unupdated. So the Jets, you can eliminate, you can eliminate. Oh, uh, because they're they're in a, they're now in a group with a bunch of other teams. So the way the spreads look for fifteen is only four people in in my pool have Green Bay, and we and we are two of them. Okay. Um, you know, you can cro- cross out Kansas City. One person does have Philadelphia, but you can cross Philadelphia out anyway. Um, you can cross out Buffalo. Someone might save them, but you know, let's just cross them out. Yeah, no one's taking the no one's Dallas. taking the Jets if they have Minnesota available there. No, they would just wait. So you can cross out Dallas. You can you can cross out uh, Buffalo. It, all it leaves is uh, it leaves Minnesota, Green Bay, and then a very large group. Of Washington, right. New Orleans, Cincinnati, yeah. Pittsburgh, yeah. Cleveland, New York Jets, and Vegas, all between a two and a three and a half point favorite. So, 
we've talked about this in previous weeks when there is whether you're decide you're choosing to drop or you're forced to drop to a, a team that you wouldn't like to take and then there's a gap beneath that team and the lower level teams yeah it's very hard for people to do that so Minnesota is going to be very heavily picked at current spreads I guess so. at, at, at five and a half and so I, I should have just deleted those Jets ones. But what this means is Minnesota can be very heavily picked if there's a good two or three point separation with the next group, which will really open up Minnesota, not just for yeah. the next week, yeah. but for, you know, if we make it to week 18 yeah. and Minnesota is, is, needs to win to preserve the two seed, which is important, yeah. they will be a eight, nine, 10 point favorite at Chicago. Now that's, that's a long ways out, but, that's just thinking. We're not like we're you know we Minnesota's not in play for the next couple of weeks for us, so it's not even really a consideration uh, right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless unless you have any other observations about your pool, I mean, we could go on to the next to the other pool. Um, uh, I mean, a, a couple more thoughts. Go for it. I, I I think uh, I think it's pretty obvious that the people that have Cincinnati are going to take them and the people that have Las Vegas are going to take them. Yeah. But there are choices, you know, after that, a lot of people listening don't have, you know, Las Vegas or Cincinnati. So like, well, who, you you know, who are you going to pick? And I I mean, I, I think the, I think the best picks are, are Pittsburgh and Detroit. I, I, the, the reason I really like them, you're not only you, first, you're very unlikely to use them later. Uh, second, you have to pick somebody, um, and I, I would just much rather save Seattle and Tennessee than I would use them right now and and make myself thinner for later in the season. So you still have a decision when you have to drop. I mean, don't just sort by the best available team left. You know, put a, put a little thought into it because, and and this is why you have to map there might be several other opponents in your pool that are in the same situation. It's, it's very easy to have used both Cincinnati and Las Vegas. It's not pretty uncommon. I mean, you can see, you can see there's three people. There's four people in my pool that don't have either of them um, that, that also don't have, a, you know, Dallas or Buffalo. So that's, that's a quarter of the pool. You would, it would be silly to pick Seattle if all three of the other ones had Seattle that just doesn't make any sense. You, you would, you'd like to separate from that subgroup by drop, you know, dropping a half a point or a point in point spread and really only a, a couple points in win percentage to separate from that group. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's, 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 that's been some interesting uh, learning this, this season, that, that, that whole concept of, 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 I don't know what it's called the sub drop, but like the idea that, yeah that the, the, the team above the, 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 the group of drop teams is, is typically overowned, you know, um, Correct. because of people, because you, because you don't want to necessarily go down to those, to those drop teams. And even when you go down to the drop teams, you could be, you could be, you could be greedy, you know, if you're going to, you're going to be dropping anyway, you know what I mean? <laughs> May as well take the lowest owned of the drop teams as long as you're, as long as, long as you're doing that anyway. Um, well, I mean, it, I mean, you and I used that same concept yeah. in week one this year uh, yeah. by taking New Orleans. And, yeah. and last year, when we had our the only video that we did last year, my favorite my favorite pick was Carolina when the schedule came out in, yeah. in, in April. And but what happened was, is they they went from like a three point favorite to a five. And there was a cushion between them and the next group. And, was, and the rest were at two and a half and three. And. The projections came out and Carolina was like a 10%. And I, I just couldn't justify, I just couldn't justify doing that when I can take it these equally, you know, crappy teams like Jacksonville and Denver. Um, and I, I can't, I mean, I took four of them or five of them, only one, one. Um, and I was out of circa in the first week and I, and, and I, and I did get through, I think with Denver, but I, I used the same concept there too, because uh, my goal was to save those upper echelon teams, but I'm much better off strength wise. My, my entry relative to everybody else's if the Carolina loses and it knocks out 10% of the field and I advance with a 2% team 
Whereas 90% of the people that advance use either a chalk team that, or they use one of the upper echelon teams that I did not, that I wanted to save. So the concept really goes throughout the entire season here. It's just more, you can be more precise with uh, your predictions for your opponent's picks because they have so they have they have far less teams to choose from. Okay, um, all right. So I want to go to this other pool. Um, yeah. This is I mean I, I try to get Madison on. It can, he just doesn't doesn't look at his Twitter. He came on afterwards and you know he's like, oh, I just saw this. So this was again. This is a pool that was uh, 177 people. They're down to four. They've been down to four for a long time. And just to re, just to recap, you know we. He had two like really just insanely strong leverage opportunities to take take it all down in weeks nine and ten, and both of them the team he needed to lose was dead to dead to rights in the fourth quarter, and he ended up getting unlucky, um, and you know he had to you know continue continue onward, and it's weird what happened this past week in this pool this this dude this roar guy freaking burn Dallas last week out of nowhere. I mean, he could have played, he had the same option at the Seattle Cleveland thing. And we were, I was wondering what he would do. Was he going to take Seattle or Cleveland? We knew it had to be one of them to save Dallas for 14, but he, he opted for this play to play Dallas now, um, which is, uh, which was just, it was just very, well, listen, I mean, it turned out to be probably the best, you know, good EV idea, but not really, because not if, only one of the other guys is going to have Seattle. Um, so it's, it was a little odd, um, but both all the teams ended up, ended up advancing. And it's just kind of interesting to see what, what these guys are going to do here. So, I mean, there's only one guy that's got Dallas available and that is the guy on the top, the ghost Hawks. So I, I, I presume he's going to play him. Uh, I can't imagine anything else. No one else has Buffalo. And again, we're, we're trying to re, re you know, Think about, again, these guys that we talked about. You know, these are the top plays. Dallas, Buffalo, and then it's a drop to Casey, Philly, Vegas, uh, Cincinnati. But let's see if any of these guys have them available. So Kansas City is totally burned. Philadelphia is totally burned. Um, so we have Vegas, Cincinnati, Seattle. Um, He's the only one with Cincinnati. I just and he told that me that. One. I remember that in yeah. a tweet, in, in a message. So He's the only one with Cincinnati and Vegas. So Gosa Hawks is the only one with Vegas available, which is interesting. Okay. So if, if this worked out the way they're supposed to, like Gosa Hawks is supposed to take Vegas. Mike is supposed to take Cincinnati. Yes, for sure. And who does not splitting have? So he, has none of those aforementioned available, right? He doesn't have Dallas. He doesn't have Kansas City. He doesn't have Buffalo. He doesn't have Vegas, and he doesn't have Cincinnati. So now he is where? So he is now at Seattle, right? But does he even have Seattle available? Let me just see. Yeah, okay. So not splitting has Seattle available. So he's just got to – I think he I think he just kind of has to take them, right? Well, he definitely should not take. Who well, else? He's got nobody I, would, else. I definitely wouldn't take Tennessee. I mean, I, I, oh. I, I assume I mean, um, between the two, I would take Seattle, even though yeah, Seattle is really nice. How, how, however, okay, in fairness, so so check this out. Ah, so not splitting what he has going for him in a weird way. He's the only one with Minnesota available, if that means anything, right? Uh, that definitely does for sure. So I, mean, I, I would definitely take the slight worst of it to, to advance the next week where you're going to have one of the better advantages that you have the rest of the season. Because Mattisau is going to have to drop to a three-point favorite in 15 right now. I mean, he, he's Mattisau has uh, Washington, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, New, and the Jets. They're, you know, three and a half point or worse in 15 himself. So – if if he's gonna if that entry you're talking about has is the only one in Minnesota, yeah, and he's everybody's gotta save, gonna have to. He's drop. got he's got he's got to save Minnesota, and take his shot there, and drop to somebody like. Well, how many have Green Bay? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's take that's, a look at that. I saw at least two. Uh, 
Yeah. No, only one. Only Ghost Hawks. Dude, Ghost Hawks is almost the nuts here. Like, Ghost Hawks, well, he's the only one with Vegas. He's the only one with Green Bay. Yeah. Yeah, so so if I'm uh, – I would definitely take – I would – I, I, God, I might even take ten. I might even take Tennessee because if if ever yeah, this is where if everyone is likely to take Tennessee in sixteen. Yeah, not, be split, not himself- splitting is not using ten. Not splitting needs to play Minnesota. In well, fifteen. Well, in fifteen, but when I'm when I'm. Oh, he could play him in sixteen. Yeah, right? that's I guess what I'm saying. saying. That's what I'm. Yeah, saying. the the the, pro- the problem with that is. If everybody is going to be picking between a group of five outside of the Green Bay pick in fifteen, you know, it's it's yeah, it's maybe, almost blind. Maybe, maybe he should just maybe he should play. So okay, so let's say he gets through fourteen. This is not split. Let's say he gets through fourteen. He gets through with whatever crap he gets through with, right? Yeah. And he's got Minnesota left. Should he play them in fifteen or sixteen? I guess that's the question. I guess maybe you're right. Maybe he's just play him in fifteen. Because he's got Mike. Mike. Mike's got nothing to play in fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Goes to Hawks I mean, has Green Bay. Oof, okay. And Roar. I mean, the way it sh- the way it shapes out are a lot of people like Mike for sixteen. Mike has Tennessee, the Jets versus Jacksonville, and Indianapolis versus the Chargers. Those are his three best games. So if people are in similar spots, you almost you you almost just have to. I, I, I mean, Mike should never take anyone but Tennessee with those options, right. um, and and just and just and just eat it, and and really just hope that everyone does it and, and have a chance a different week. Um, I, th- this is where whether you have four people left, uh, you know, sixteen in my case. I mean, I've done this for thirty or forty. Even though there's a lot of people left, it gets pretty obvious yeah. where the where the inflection points are in the pool the rest of the year, and you, and you have to find those, and you need to find. Should you, should you take your chance now, or should you try to advance to a later week, eating some shock, and, and get to week 16 or 17, and then lay the hammer down there? Because for, in this situation here, I would, pro, I would not risk someone else getting off of Tennessee uh, in a group of four. But if there are like 16 people left, like in my pool, and I only, let's say I only had one entry, I would not be taking Tennessee in week 16 myself if I, if I only had one. I, I would go for it. Um, 15 of the 16 people have Tennessee. I'm just going to hope that almost all of them at current spreads take them, and I'm going to hope to get lucky. Um, but with less people left, if one person deviates, it makes deviating yeah. yourself really, really bad. Yeah. Um, and, it, I mean, unless you know exactly who your opponent is in real life, and even if you look at their – I mean, someone in my pool took Las Vegas uh, uh, this past week. I did not understand that. Um, uh, that, that was – somebody, that was very, somebody went down in circuit with Jacksonville. Or something yeah, like I, saw, I saw that. that, see, that see, but see, that's not really surprising to me because with so many people left and then with the two extra weeks, you need – I mean, look how many people have Dallas and Buffalo left in circle. Like twenty yeah. percent of the people have Dallas left. Right. Um. In that. And 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 that. And you have to remember, they had an individual slate where you can yeah. only pick three teams, and, yeah. and the winning teams were Dallas, Buffalo, and Minnesota. Yet forty percent of the people left have Minnesota. Yeah. Somehow. And twenty percent of the people have Dallas, and like I don't know, ten percent of the people have Buffalo. So that I mean, that's incredibly sharp. It just shows. Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, the people that got through or the, the people that really set themselves up, not yeah. just for Thanksgiving, but the weeks after. So we're going to – here will be the official predictions for this pool. Um, so I'm going to say that Go- – I think you will all agree that Goosehawks is going to take Vegas. Mattisau is going Certainly. to take Cincinnati. You never know. He's very volatile, but he'll he'll he even told me in advance that that that, that he's concerned because he's going to be the only one the Cincinnati available, so he's taking it. And of course, yeah. as he mentioned, what is it a road road home revenge game against on a Tuesday or something? I forget what it was, but nonetheless, yeah. uh, not splitting is well. Roar is going to take uh, 
Well, no one's taking Dallas, right? I'm sorry. Goosehawks. Goosehawks is taking Dallas. Sorry about that. Goosehawks is taking Dallas. Madison is taking Cincinnati. It was not. So no one's taking Vegas. Wait a minute. Let's go back here. Goosehawks has Dallas available. So he's taking them. Madison has nobody except Cincinnati. He's taking them. Yeah, I'm looking at that one. Yeah. Not splitting has. He's the one with Minnesota available. So but he has, he has to take Tennessee to, or Seattle. So he's got to take Tennessee or Seattle. Probably going to – he'll take Seattle to, to keep yeah, – I mean, I, I would too. Even if two people are going to be on it, I, I just, you just can't give up that six. Just because what if you get down to week 16, there's two yeah. people left, yeah. and you both have Tennessee. I mean, yeah. you just got to both take it. And Roar, I don't – what is he doing? He's got – he's got nothing. He's got – I guess he has to take Seattle, right? Yeah, and this is one of those where, like, I mean, I, the, you got to take Seattle because you just hate to get to Week 16, be heads up, and not right. have Tennessee left. And and, and yeah. you know, you, you're this is an example of you're taking the worst of it in a vacuum, but it, it's hard to quantify the the future value that you'll gain by taking Seattle and saving Tennessee, um, but. This is one of those spots where I, I wouldn't even question it. Um, I, I, you know, if there are a lot more people left, I probably would take Tennessee because no one's going to do it. And then you can hope like Cincinnati, Las Vegas, and Seattle lose because um, they'll be so heavily concentrated on those teams because they want to keep Seattle for 16. And because there's so many people left, you benefit by not taking Tennessee in 16 anyway, so you may as well get on them earlier where no one's going to take them um, and, and take that advantage there. Uh, I, I do want to make one more comment on, on my situation for next week. I just want to acknowledge that this is not something I planned for having Green Bay in this unbelievable spot. This is just absolute blind squirrel luck. Um, and, and there's real. There's no strategy to it. It just sometimes things are going to fall into your lap, but a lot of the times, the luckiest you're going to get in these pools is this type of situation where you have a team that's already pretty good, or uh, you know probably the pretty good range that gets used up, and then they fall into this unbelievable situation where they play against a team that is not playing their three, four, or five best players. And they're just throwing the season, you know, they're throwing the season away. Um, so I'm not saying that I deserve this by keeping Green Bay, but Green Bay is the type of team to where this type of thing could happen to. It does, you know, it's not going to happen to a team like Carolina that sucks because even if it happened, everybody has Carolina left, so everybody would gain the same advantage by the Rams, you know, caving in and and, and their season being over. Um, a lot of people have the chargers left in my pool there, you know, if once you get past what week four, you just couldn't use them anymore, but the chargers are the same way. I think 10 people have them in my pool. We're one of them, but they also play the Rams in week, uh, 17. So we, 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 we happen to have a two game stretch in one of our uh, entries where we get to play the Rams twice. Never would have thought, you know, that'd be a good thing, but. This is another advantage of saving, you know, the, the, you know, the, not the top tier teams, but the second tier teams that, you know, they could have a great spot and then you just, you end up falling into something like this by, by luck. Well, I'm going to give you a little more credit than that. So we talk about, uh, about uh, EV versus future value all year long. And, and, and the point is, is that it's always a battle between whether to take the EV player or the future value player. But the thing to remember is that the way future value works is the further out future value has to be right. projected, the more variance it has, and, and shit happens every year. Now, you don't know exactly when or where or to whom, but it always does. And and it almost – listen, these, 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 these football players are – these are these – are, they're human beings and they're fragile. You know, you, you, yeah. you go out there and you get the crap beat out of you all season long you're going to get hurt and people get hurt. And these, some of these, uh, listen, if, if you, if you had given me like odds on, on what would happen in green Bay games, I would think the opposite. I would think that, that, uh, 
Like Aaron Rodgers would be out for the season. You know what I mean? Or something like that. Yeah. You know, but but these quarterbacks that are that are worth so much to your team, especially the uh, you know, listen, it goes both ways. Because if you're that valuable to your team, you're probably running a lot, you're probably doing a lot. And the more you do, the more you risk getting hurt. And that's just the way it goes, you know. So the point is, is that yeah, you got lucky, but the reason why you have to put yourself in a position where where the luck you have as many outs as possible. You know what I mean? So, Correct. So, no, so, no, I, no, I acknowledge that. I just don't want to give off that, oh, I was saving Green Bay for this spot. No. It's, it's just very ironic because Green Bay and, and Circa, we, if we were still in, we would have had Green Bay. And when Jacksonville lost, that knocked out a, a disproportionate amount of people that had Green Bay left. And – there's currently only 10% of people in Circa have Green Bay. I mean, in my pool alone, there's 25%. I mean, it's only a sample of 16. But in Circa, we once once Jacksonville lost, and I saw the new pick uh, availability, I, I, could, I was stunned. I mean, basically, a lot of the people that got knocked out were willing to, like, eat the chalk. I assume they knew it would be chalky because they wanted to save, I think it was Tampa Bay, you know, which ended up not being a team you wanted either, turns out. But because of that, Green Bay became an unbelievable pick for Christmas for right. us. And ironically, it completely flipped where in week 12, the main slate, Miami was vastly underpicked as a 14-point favorite, which, which blew me away that that many people would want to save Miami for a four-game slate so far out. When they're playing a team like Green Bay, you know, in the end, they have Aaron Rodgers, and if they have a chance to maybe make the seventh seed, that's not going to be an easy out. And now Green Bay ends up being not what we wanted to have them on Christmas and Circa, but what we need in week 15 against the Rams. It, it, but you're right. It, I acknowledge I, – I, I, I gave myself a lot of outs, and it's, it's specifically with teams that are going to be less owned because if it was Carolina or Tennessee or Seattle or Detroit, you know, it just doesn't matter. Like if, if Detroit or Pittsburgh – we're playing the Rams this week. It wouldn't matter because everybody has both those teams. Um, and if they were a seven point, a six point favorite against the Rams, they would be heavily picked this week. But next week with Green Bay being so less owned, it's gonna it's I mean, it's a great hammer spot that you just, that we just fell into. All right, so so we're gonna be rooting for the Rams against Vegas. Um, we'll probably be rooting for some Carolina against Seattle. Tell, uh, tell me how stupid is it if I try to convince Jesse that we should take Vegas instead of Buffalo this week with, with, with what we're looking at here. We, we could be on a group of five, but we would definitely be on a group of three with Buffalo. But the group, one person, that pers one of those people have Las Vegas in Cincinnati, and they're guaranteed a smaller group if they go Cincinnati. So it could be for Las Vegas, and then we would get to save Buffalo for week 16. I wonder, at, well, at I, Chicago, I wonder rather than taking Minnesota. Well, you know what? Maybe I don't want. To, maybe we won't go into it this week. But um, the other thing that you have the benefit of of taking Seattle, which we haven't talked about yet, which we should one of these days, is that you could play Buffalo twice in the playoffs. If you get there. <laughs> that is, you know, that is true. And, and really in, in this pool, because there's only one buy now, you really want the two, you really want the two seed. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, I was not going to bring it up, but since you did, I told my partner, you see, I have Minnesota way at the end there. One of those pictures. Um, I told Jesse, we should, we should create a scenario where, you know, maybe we, you know, if Minnesota is very likely to be the two seed, you know, if they play like, you know, they could easily be a seven or eight point favorite in the first round of the playoffs. And oh, yeah. they might so be wait, shocking. So hold, wait, so hold on. So that's the way it works. Only the one seed gets the buy. Yeah. That's a so yeah. So you that's so that's so you want the, so you, you want, want the, the you two want the two seed. seed. So then you can burn you the them and you play them again. Correct. And then you and then you well, yeah. what you do is we haven't made the playoffs in this format yet, but right. you take the two seed and then you jump over to the other conference. Right. And then what you hope is right. You actually you want Minnesota to be kind of chalky so that 
the people that are still in have already taken Minnesota, and then Minnesota goes to the Super Bowl, and then you're the only one with a pick left. Because if everybody jumps to the AFC because they want to uh, – then, then you, you, you went out that way. The only thing I do not like about this pool, and I, and I misread the rules the one year we, we went all the way, is if you're boxed out, you don't automatically lose. What? If, yeah, and I don't like that. And I misread the rules, and it cost me because I, I, I made a big hedge thinking that I was going to win with, with a certain result in the conference championship game. Oh, you mean you can make a pick? If, if, if you get boxed out going into the Super Bowl right. and the other person has a pick, they don't automatically win. They have to beat you, I say. They, they, that team say. would have to win, which I don't – Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I, mean, I get that. that. That's the rules, but I, I'm in another pool where boxed out automatically loses. Oh, so, you wait. Um, you wait maybe, maybe you'll join me in this. You want the greatest boxed out pool ever, the, the, the NCAA tournament pools. The, that's, uh, well, that's what that's what had happened in and, – and, uh, I've I've almost won that twice. Um, that's a big, big that's a big mind f. I mean the 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 the, the NCAA bracket pools where where you can have to play each team like once. That's those are awesome. That's like the ultimate mapping mapping exercise. Uh, it, I mean it's fun because it, it only takes a couple of weeks and then and then every and then all the picks are set. It's you don't waste. Well, not I enjoy doing this, but this right. takes look at I mean three three months and and the other one takes right. two weeks. Right. And then you're forced, right? Then everything's forced pretty much. All right, listen, good luck this week. And, uh, Thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll get them next week. If, if I do take Las Vegas, I, I'll, I'll type it in the Discord. Sounds good. Later. See ya. Bye-bye.